Bye guys. In today's video we're going to go through all the configurations to set up Mach 3 for the Precision Matthews 727 CNC build. Now before we get started in going through the configuration file I want to take a minute to emphasize that once you get your machine set up you need to make a backup copy of your configuration file and place it in another folder uh, maybe on your desktop so that you always have that to fall back on and so one of the first things I want to show you because I think this is really important uh, especially if you're going to make future changes uh, it's always good to have the original working configuration to fall back on when you go to configuration and you save your settings they are going to be saved in your Mach 3 directory in your C drive and in C drive under the Mach 3 tab and then in Mach 3 it'll be XML backups click on that if you look over here in the bottom right hand corner you can see that this is the PM 727 CNC profile uh, yours may be named different or you may have just the generic uh, Mach 3 default profile there um, if you do it'll just say Mach 3 mil like these do right here but if you have named it then look for that name and today is the September the 3rd and so this is the current file so you need to take this file copy it and save it in another directory I like to put mine in a folder on my desktop however you can put it in whichever folder directory you'd like but make you a copy and save it elsewhere just in case somehow this Mach 3 directory gets corrupt and you'll always have it and in order to restore the Mach 3 configuration files to this particular file you want to take that copied file the with the XB6 extension and you want to paste it into the Mach 3 folder and if you look scroll down you'll find the profile name mine happens to be PM 727 underscore CNC and you'll see a file named it's an XML document and you want to paste that file into this directory and you want to change the extension from XB6 to .xml you'll be good to go and when Mach 3 loads it pulls up that particular file and sets all your configurations so that they'll all be correct so now that you know how to back up and save your configuration files so in the event that you have some kind of catastrophe and you need to resort back to the original setup uh, let's go through this configuration settings so you go up to config ports and pins now this first tab is uh, port setup and access selection I don't change any of this I just leave it the default configuration the next tab is motor outputs and we're going to be using X Y and Z axis and also the spindle now all of these are on step port direction port that should all be set to port 1 because we're using the parallel port on the computer and for the X axis we're using step pin 2 direction pin 3 for the Y axis we're using step pin 4 direction pin 5 and I also have direction low active checked uh, this may or may not need to be checked in your particular situation depending on how you have your motors mounted but checking this or unchecking this will change the direction of your axis movement my Z axis is set up for step pin 6 direction pin 7 and last the spindle is set up for step pin 14 direction pin 15 
Uh, this may be configured different uh, if you're using a different breakout board or a C6. Uh, I'm using the C11GS, so I'm using pin 14 and 16, which are the default for those for that particular breakout board. Um, the next tab is our input signals. I'm using home switches, so I have the X, Y, and Z axis home switches checked. Again, port 1, and again, they're all active low. Uh, for the X axis home switch, I'm using pin 11. For the Y, pin 12, and for the Z, pin 13. Also, on my inputs, I have my probe set up for pin number 15. It's not active at currently, but I do have it wired up. And my e-stop, which is pin number 10. And it, as you can see, is enabled. And that's pretty much it. Uh, input 1 and 2 I'll use later on. And these will be for the ATC. We'll get into that later on. But those are the basic input signals for the current setup. My output, output signals. The only one I'm really currently using is output number three. I'm just using output number three and pin number nine and that is for my solid state relay to turn on my flood coolant and that is set up for active low. The safety charge pump, I've got to go back and wire this in. I did find out that there's a situation where if the computer is turned off and the control cabinet is powered on, the spindle may run. So I want to use this safety charge pump to configure that so that it, that doesn't happen. It's just a safety thing. But I have that set up on pin number 17, port 1. And again, this pin 17 is the default for the C11GS. If your uh, particular breakout board has a charge pump function, it may be a different pin number but I do have that enabled. Uh, the encoder MPGs, I have nothing uh, set up configured here. Uh, the spindle setup. Now I'm gonna do a separate video on spindle setup, but I'll quickly go through these settings. I have disabled relays checked. The motor control, I have used spindle output checked and PWM control checked. Uh, the pulse width modulation base frequency I have set for 20 and the minimum is 5%. Uh, this right here I just left it all default. I have my M7s 4 and I don't have any delay set up on my flood coolant. The last tab is mill options. I haven't said anything. These are all just in a default position. I haven't changed any of this. Make sure you hit apply if you make any changes. Hit OK. The next configuration is motor tuning. Now when you go through motor tuning and set up all your axis, um, again, uh, I'll do a separate video on this just to kind of let you know how I set mine up. Um, this is the X, Y, and Z axis, and the spindle. Now, we're not using step and direction for the spindle, so you really don't have to worry about setting up your spindle um, because we are using pulse width modulation with the C11GS. However, if you're using the C6, you will use step and direction, and so you will need to make these changes here. Okay. All right, next under config, we have general configuration. Now, these general configuration uh, settings, of course, they may be different with your particular machine, but I'll just kind of go over what I use, and um, you can use it as just uh, informational. The first thing is the tool change here. If you have a TTS holder system 
and TTS holders or a power draw bar, uh, then you'll want to check stop spindle and wait for cycle start. That way when you get a command for a tool change, it'll stop. You can put in the new tool and hit cycle start to get going again. Of course, if you don't and you're just wanting running one tool at a time, click on ignore tool change and when it gets the M6 command, it'll just skip it and keep going. And if you have an auto tool changer, of course, select that. Uh, Angular properties. Uh, everything's linear, but uh, later on I'm going to be adding an automatic tool changer, hopefully, and that will be uh, a B axis, and I have it selected as uh, rotational or angular. Program M to M30, whenever the G code ends, um, you can have it remove tool offsets. Radius comp, turn the spindle off, of course, um, and if you want to, for safety reasons, you can have it turn off all outputs. Uh, that's default. I left this default. Uh, under editor, whatever G code editor you use, the default is notepad, and that's what I use. Uh, under motion mode, uh, I have constant velocity checked. Uh, distance, I have absolute, and under IJ mode, I have incremental. For the mill, it's the XY plane. Now these jog increments, you can set these up, but I have mine set up for a thousandths, ten thousandths under uh, the jog. Under shuttle wheel setting, I have mine set for five hundredths of a second. Under the basic general configurations right here, um, I have persistent jog mode and look ahead 20 lines. You can change this if you'd like, but I just leave it at 20. I think that's the default setting. And you can play around with these to see which ones you, you want. These are pretty much default the way they were. Um, use watchdogs, enhance pulsing. Uh, if you want your to allow wave sounds files in your macros or whatever, if you want it to uh, allow speech to talk, you can check those. Rotational here. Uh, 360 degree rollover. This is for the ATC when I have it set up. I don't have it now. Uh, screen control. Uh, if you have high resolution screen, uh, you want box DROs. Uh, auto screen enlarge. It'll stretch Mach 3 out if you have a wide screen. Uh, you can play around with these settings. Under input signals, debouncing, and noise rejection. Um, Default is zero. I change this to 100. Uh, this is the amount of time that a limit switch has to be tripped in order to uh, actually fault. And if you've had any kind of issues where you're inadvertently getting triggers on your limit switches, check this right here and make sure it's not zero. And that's probably going to be your issue. So I have mine set at 100. Um, tool selection is persistent down here. Uh, CV control. Uh, you can check these if you want for constant velocity. Stop at uh, less than 90 degrees. On axis DRO properties. Tool selections persistent. Now, what this does is when you say you're running tool number seven, you stop Mach 3, you shut down, come back the next day, and you reboot everything. If you check this, it will have tool number seven still in the tool number right here for the tool information. If you do not check this, it will reset to zero every time. 
I leave mine unchecked because uh, different code I'm gonna have different tools and I always um, use my first tool to set my Z height so I always change this I'm used to running it that way however uh, you may want to check tool selections persistent and then that way it'll always use the last tool that you were using that's completely up to you um, persistent offsets it will remember whatever offsets you were having and persistent DROs it will remember what your DROs were uh, on shutdown so that's pretty much it for general configurations and again these are really just to kind of customize some of the features in Mach 3 for your personal um, preferences that's general configs um, homing and limits now for the precision Matthews um, this is where you set up your soft limits for the x-axis I have it set at 18 inches the X travel is 18 so the minimum is 0 and the max is 18 I'm homing in the negative direction and once I home I will zero auto zero the DROs uh, you can change the speed in which it homes I could leave mine on the default which is 20 percent for the Y axis my maximum travel is 10 and a half inches again the minimum is zero and we are also homing in the negative direction and I'm going to also auto zero the DROs uh, the Z axis the Z axis is reverse of the X and Y we're actually homing in the positive direction and all the way up is zero and then the minimum the maximum is zero excuse me and then the minimum is minus 15.75 because we're moving down in a negative direction now the maximum travel for the precision Matthews is 18 inches from the top of the table to the bottom of the spindle however I'm going to normally have tools in there so I'm kinda gave myself a little uh, safety zone there so that's pretty much all you need to set up for the soft limits uh, the G28 coordinates if you this is more important I think on the lathe than maybe the mill however if you want to have your G28 home position set to a specific coordinate you can just type those numbers in there and whenever a G28 command moves comes up in the G code it'll move to that location if you leave it zero and a G28 move comes up it'll move all the way to the home switches so be aware of that uh, on the lathe this is really good to have on your z-axis because sometimes your beds you know 36 inches or whatever that's where your home switch is and so when you do a G28 move you just might want to back it off about 10 inches or 5 inches or so and so it's good to have have this option uh, the next is backlash for backlash compensation uh, I'll get into that into another video um, I do have mine set but yours will be set completely different depending on your machine and these numbers here are not exactly final at the moment to enable your backlash you want to check that and the backlash speed um, in which the backlash traverses to make up that backlash I got it set at 100% of the max speed uh, your tool table of course you'll set this up as you add tooling and these offsets will all be different according to your specific tools um, you can click on these 
here and change the picture here of the tool but these are all lathe tools and we're going we're using end mills here so it doesn't really matter uh, the next tab is spindle pulleys now I'm running mine through a gearbox currently and there are three different actual settings I could set up but because I'm running a VFD and a variable uh, the variable speed I've got it just on one setup and the minimum is 300 rpms and the max is 3425 because the gearbox is a one-to-one -one ratio uh, once I get a belt drive configured I'll have actually a step pulley and so there'll be two different a high and a low um, that'll come up in the future but for now I just have it set like this you do need to set this if you're using the variable frequency drive so that the Mach 3 um, can put out the correct 0 to 10 volt signal. And that's pretty much it. Uh, save Z setup. I don't have any, I'm not using this at the moment. Um, some, it's good when you're just starting out to make sure that you're moving Z up out of the way before you move X and Y whenever you hit the stop button or if you have some kind of malfunction and you can have it move in machine coordinates you can have it move in work coordinates or you can have it do just an incremental rise um, which is normally what I do and it's a quarter inch above zero uh, however I'm not moving that because sometimes it does uh, present some problems so but I would suggest that you check this and use this if you're just starting out and the last is just to save the settings so go to config save settings and now you have your um, configuration saved in your Mach 3 folder on your C drive under XML backups and there it is all right so that wraps up setting up our configuration files for Mach 3 if you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment thanks for watching the video thumbs up if you like the video and most importantly be safe